Hey everybody, um, today just wanted to do a quick video on um, the DAC Assistant in LabVIEW. So um, DAC Assistant is a really cool tool. Um, it kind of builds the DACMX code for you to do various things and it just gives you a simple GUI to configure everything. Um, so if you right click, go down to your measurement IO, go to NI DACMX, you'll find DAC Assistant right there. It is blue because it is an Express VI. So if you drop it down, it'll take just a second to um, load. Um, usually don't get that dialog, but I did. Um, yeah, um, take just a second and you get this little dialog like this. <clears throat> From here, I can decide whether I am generating a signal or acquiring a signal. Um, so DAC Assistant works for um, your uh, inputs, outputs, and basically all types, right? So I can do analog, counter, digital, both for acquisition and generation. Um, so I'm just going to do some acquisition first just to kind of show how this works. Um, and I can expand the specific type of measurement I want to do. And you can see it gives you a whole bunch of options for... Um, Things you can pick from. I'm going to pick voltage. Um, once you've picked um, the type of thing you want to uh, either measure or generate, um, it's basically going to look at what's connected to your um, system at, that supports that type of measurement. So these are supported physical channels. So I selected analog input voltage. These are things that can actually measure analog input voltage. Um, so I can select a single channel and click finish. I can hit control and select multiple channels. And I can also shift click to select multiple channels. So, um, and I'll show you, we can actually go back and edit this later. So I'm gonna hit finish. Um, and you see then I get another dialog. Um, so this one is where I actually get to configure um, my acquisition. Um, so I'm able to specify the signal range um, and I can specify units. Um, I can specify the terminal configuration. So um, some DAC hardware you only have one option. Um, some hardware like this 9205 has multiple options. So depending on the wiring um, you might want to, and they actually give you some help over here as well. So if you didn't know what differential meant or RSE, you know, you can um, take a look at that. Um, scaling, you can apply your own custom scaling. Um, so yeah, I can go in and I can define a, um, I can go to create new and I can decide whether I want like a linear, like a Y equals MX plus B. If I want to map different ranges, if I want a table of values or like a polynomial curve fit, I can define that scaling. <clears throat> I also can go in and specify how I want to read data. So either reading one sample at a time on demand, one sample at a time hardware timed, reading a fixed amount of samples or continuous samples. So I'm just going to do continuous samples. Um, and there we've kind of got all that set up. Um, there is also the capability to perform calibrations and stuff like that. Um, and then you've also got some other things up here. So I can configure triggering. So if I know I need a trigger for this type of task, I can specify the type of the trigger. Um, I can specify more advanced timing. So by default, it's gonna use the internal sample clock. Um, if I want to pick something else, I can pick something else. Um, and then it also has a way where you can go ahead and enable TDMS logging. So if you want to log this data to a TDMS file, you can. So I've kind of got this all configured. Um, I, there's also this nifty uh, connection diagram. So it shows you exactly for the channel you've selected how your signal needs to be wired up, which is actually really cool. Um, back uh, here, um, I'll, I'll show you, I can run this guy and I'm getting data. So, um, yeah, oops. So yeah, um, we're able to just run it from this window. 
Um, see our data, we can stop it when we want, we can then go modify our task. And there's a few different things we can do as well. So on, like we've selected this voltage task, I can actually rename it to anything that I want. So I could call it, you know, uh, AI0, or I could name it something specific like UUT voltage or something like that. And then click uh, save, and that's actually going to save that with your data as like a property of the dynamic data type that it will output. So um, that way um, I can have kind of a name to that channel. Um, I can also right click and I can remove that name if I want, or remove that item from the task. And I can also change the physical channel. So if I had selected zero and I realized, oh, I actually wanted one, I can go in and now select channel one. And now it'll be able to run on channel one. Um, you can see on the connection diagram, um, now we're the next channel down. So, um, yeah, and then I also can go ahead and add other stuff in as well. So um, I've got one voltage. I can add another channel of something else or another channel of voltage, for example. So maybe I want to add channel five. And now I've got two things in here. Um, and I'm able to read both of those. So, um, yeah, you can kind of play with this. Make sure you're getting the data you're expecting. Um, you can also change this to, you know, view the values in a table as opposed to the graph. And you can just mess with it till you're happy with your task. Once you're happy, you can just click OK. And basically, it's going to generate all of the code to do this in the background for you. Um, so it takes just a second. Um, but basically this is going to generate your DACMX code for you and then you can implement whatever else you want into your LabVIEW code so different maybe front panel indicators different controls all of that stuff you can implement um, however you see fit so it's building RVI um, not sure it's taking a little bit longer than it normally does um, but yeah, basically writing the, the code for us for this task, um, you're able to just go and kind of configure at a, you know, through a GUI, high level, what you need. Um, and there you go. Um, we also get for this specific task, it knows that I had selected continuous um, uh, samples, which this knows, hey, that sounds like something you would be wanting to do in a loop, right? Do you want me to add a loop? Um, and I can just hit yes, and then boom, it automatically puts it into a loop. Um, and I can go and I can customize my lab UVI however I want. I can add, um, you know, a graph or a chart. Um, and I can copy this guy down. Yeah, and I can verify, I can run my task. Um, and I'm able to get my data through just how I'd expect. Um, so yeah, working well. Um, and then if I ever want to edit this uh, DAC Assistant, I can just double click on it and it's gonna re-pop up that dialog so I can reconfigure what it does. Um, there are some inputs and outputs, so there's some things that I can control without actually changing the entire DAC Assistant. So if I wanna change the sample rate, I can change that right here. Um, if I want to change um, number of samples, I can change that from here. Now, all the other stuff, physical channels, all of that stuff, I, I'm actually not able to edit that from here. Um, one other thing I wanted to show, if I um, right click on my DAC Assistant, um, I can, there's these options here for generate NI DACMX code. So if you maybe got a task all set up and um, it's working great, but you're curious how you would actually implement that with the DACMX API, you can just go ahead and hit that. Um, this is gonna take just a second, but it's actually gonna convert this ExpressVI into uh, a whole bunch of DACMX calls. Um, that are actually going to implement this with the lower level functions. Um, so that way you can see A, how it was done, um, and you can also pretend like you're the one that wrote that yourself, even though it was LabVIEW who wrote it for you. Um, so it's just taking just a second. Um, should be done in just a sec. I don't know why my, my uh, laptop's running really slow today. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, should be done in just a sec. And then we have the actual DACMX API code here. We can um, look at how it was implemented. We can modify it if we want to. And it makes it much more reusable um, than just the DAC assistant. Um, okay, still going. Sweet, so just finished, um, yeah, and we've got our DACMX code now. So um, it's gone ahead and replaced our DAC assistant with um, the equivalent DACMX function. So you can see here we have a DACMX start, we've got a DACMX read, we've got a DACMX um, clear, and then there's also this sub VI here that it created for us that houses all of the setup code. Um, so here's where we're actually um, creating a task. Um, we're configuring the channels and then we are um, configuring the timing. So all of this is generated automatically. We didn't have to mess with anything, just converting the DAC assistant into DACMX code. So really cool tool. If you don't know what you're doing um, or even if you just you know, really quickly want to put something together to do something. It's it's very quick, um, and then you're also able to take that code and convert it out into um, regular DACMX API stuff. So um, really cool. Um, definitely highly recommend if you're just kind of getting started started with LiveView that you play with the DAC assistant and get comfortable with it. Um, so hope that's helpful, and thanks for watching.